My search for caviar begins with a search for the husband and wife team from Show Me Caviar, who have agreed to give me a taste of what it takes to get high quality fish eggs out of a shovel head sturgeon and into your mouth. I think I found the happy couple. I'm guessing that's Cliff and Kara. You guessed right. This is my big entrance. What do you think so far? Uh, not bad. <laughs> right. How are you? Not bad. Cliff. Mike Rowe. Kara Ross. Kara Good Ross. Permission to come aboard. Come aboard. Does this uh, <clears throat> boat have an official name? Uh, Hillbilly Deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says on the press. Does it really? <laughs> Not to overstate the weirdness of what's about to happen here, but it's worth repeating that the most expensive food in America is being harvested by the modest crew of a boat called the Hillbilly Deluxe. Carry on. Really? Caviar? In the Mississippi? Absolutely. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? 20 years. Married couple, are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's that working out? I've been doing it for about the last three. I love it. I love coming, I mean, you know. No, I was this, talking this. about the marriage. Oh, <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> Good. Yeah. But what are the odds that we're going to? Is it shovelhead sturgeon yeah, shovel, now? Shovel and sturgeon. Yeah. So are the odds very good we're going to find some? Extremely well, good. We're going to find some. Guaranteed. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, Cliff, you're willing to guarantee that. success. If you, if you say guarantee, we're, we're, it jinxes the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. We're fishing. I'm tempted to ask if you ever had a little row in your mouth, but it'd be weird coming from me, <laughs> so I'm not going to say that. <laughs> For the record. Fish row and Mike row have almost nothing in common, including the way they taste, or so I'm told. There is one thing you need to be careful of, though. What's that? It's got a seven iron in front of the I boat. I do. There's a seven iron in the front of the boat. You just keep this on hand to keep everybody in line. And by everybody, you mean him. Yeah, I'm clear up there. If he's back there, you know, right. I can wing it, and if I'm not a great shot, I still have a pretty good you chance. you got a pretty so, good shot, because yeah. this thing gets some good rotation on exactly. it. Exactly. It's bound to find a mark. Exactly. And leave one. So where's the bucket you're talking about getting the water in and dumping it into the thing? Uh, there's a bucket in here that we'll need to get water in just to put it in here. Can't fill it till we got fish in the boat. That's just extra weight, no yeah, good. It, no. No, it's one of those, no. you know, you can't guarantee you're going to catch a fish thing. You just don't say it. You don't put the water in. You don't say you're going to catch the fish. So we're talking about straight up superstition, thing. right? Yeah, exactly. right. Don't, don't count your fish exactly. before you got them in the boat. Like many other fishing operations, Cliff and Kara's business relies on their ability to keep their nets in constant use. Like all other fishing operations, their business also relies on luck, which is why every fisherman I've ever met, and I've met a few, are superstitious right down to the bone. How deep is the water out here? 18 foot right here. 18 feet. Yep. Mary, you ready to go? That blue thing floating around out there marks the location of the first fishing net we'll be retrieving. And yes, there will be more than one. You scoop up a buoy. You're going to yank on that. Assisting us in the business of hauling in the net, a hydraulically powered wheel. Ah, got one right off the bat. There's a sturgeon. Is that what we're looking for? That's Not big enough to keep, but it's what we're looking for. Removing the fish from the net is simple. Of course, simple and easy are two very different things. You want to watch out for these little guys here. The smaller the fish, the sharper they are. Interesting. And then whenever you get down the back, same way. All the way down through here, got a barge. And this is the razor sharp through here. That'll tear, yeah. tear you up in a heartbeat. Especially if you go oh, yeah. against yeah. the grain. Ugly. Is this a female? Mm, nope, not a female. If you're a sturgeon in the Mississippi River, you want to be a male. Trust me on this. You might get scooped up in a net, but at least you'll live to fight another day. Look, it's a hideous fish. I know, isn't that mouth wild under that, there? Look, look at that. that mouth, man. On the downside, you're always going to be ugly. <laughs> look at that. If he could talk, he'd be saying, throw me back, I guess. And no amount of luck is going to change that. Throw me back, right. yeah. Is this a male? No, that's not a male. Well, that's good news. Like I said, a decidedly sexist operation. To ask the obvious question, what, how exactly can you tell? All right, let's get the, the blue line. Blue line right down his belly. We're going to check her to make sure. The deeper and darker the blue line, the more mature the fish. Females are called hens, by the way. Tell me what you're doing yeah, exactly. Trying to draw an egg. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah. Ah. Now you want your initiation? Sure. Oh, you. What's it taste like? I gotta tell you, it tastes like caviar. That's good news. So we don't we don't need to clean it or anything when we go back. 
Or no, I think That's maybe I think maybe I gave the wrong answer. I think maybe it tastes like unclean caviar. There you go. No, now that now that I really let it marinate there, there's an aftertaste. Is there? This end is 22 inches. That means she's a keeper. All right, we got one. Put her in the tub, and as soon as oh, at some point you're gonna have to put water in there. Yeah. We want to put some in there because I don't think we're jinxing it now. Mature hens go into the live well, where they'll stay until we process them. Without water, the live well would quickly turn in to a dead well. So if you're keeping track, we got eight nets. We just did one. We got a bunch of stuff that we didn't want, but we got one uh, female shovelhead sturgeon with eggs in it that tasted vaguely of poop. The nets are stored in these plastic barrels until they're redeployed and the cycle begins again. Well, I was figuring on taking you out for supper tonight, but if he can't kick it in gear a little bit, you can be <laughs> eating cereal before you go to bed. <laughs> That's good right there. All right. Perfect. Let's go get another one. So where's the second net? Wherever he goes to. Wherever he goes? And he's the captain, so Because I... you're, you're that obedient, subservient type of wife, right? Oh, jeez. Right? You know, you're sitting right on the edge. <laughs> you're sitting right on the edge. I live on the edge, I don't, I don't even need the seven iron to <laughs> take care of you right now. Yeah, so I'm gonna, pick, I'm gonna pick up this blue guy. I'm still trying to figure out how they're running, like the nets. Are they going this way or this way? Or are they standing up? They've got a weight line on the bottom, so that one's gonna go on the hey, bottom. Hey, there it is. Oh, my. Oh, my. Thanks. There you go, sir. Thank you. It's hard to find good talking help. to your wife. Cliff and Kara are a greased, well-oiled machine. I am not part of that machine. Ready? Yeah. I am learning, though, and benefiting from the gentle guidance of my patient and understanding captain. Go with that about as quick as you can. Keeps the boat in motion when you're doing that. <laughs> There's a fair amount of tension. A little bit, yeah. Mike, you need me to come help? You doing OK? <laughs> <laughs> you did make it look easy before, though. Oh, you got one. Yep, there's one. <sighs> oh, there's one. Yep. Snuck in there. That looks like I might be him. You do remember I want to take her out for supper tonight, right? It just seems like with this wheel spinning, there would be more mechanical assistance. Yeah. But I don't think there's really much. All right, that's good. Male, female. Big old gal. That's, that's the difference in that's what I was talking one. about. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a no-brainer there. That's a nice fish. So she's full of eggs. Oh, yeah. So it's a pale blue, almost a uh, periwinkle. <laughs> right, oh, Cliff? It's a periwinkle. Isn't that a pretty word? <laughs> Do you like that, Kara? <laughs> I like that. Periwinkle. Right. I try and use periwinkle every other show. I thought he put water in here. She put I, a couple buckets. You know what? I put two buckets, and she said, good job. And the way she said well, it. Well, I said good job because he set it down like he was done. So I didn't want to make him feel bad, like, right off the bat. So I was like, good job. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. 